Today we're making some more vintage inspired Christmas DIYs. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project is going to be some Santa boots. We're going to take one of these cloths from the automotive section at Dollar Tree, two of these little tinsel boots from Dollar Tree, I have some foam clay and this is from Amazon, some black paint and some matte Mod Podge or gloss Mod Podge. I'm going to cut off my tags and then we are going to remove the embellishments off of these boots because they can be used again and in fact we will be using those in another project today. So just carefully take those off and then this just winds around a plastic frame. So you just pick a section and start unwinding. But go ahead and save that because you can use that on other projects. And if you're doing vintage inspired DIYs, these little pieces of tinsel will really come in handy. Then we'll start at the toe of this boot and just take the red section off next. Now you see there are on little hooks, look like little hooks around there. That's how it holds everything into place on this frame, which is in two please pieces in the left and the right side of the boot. So we don't need these for what we're going to be doing. We want a smooth surface. I'm going to go around and cut off all of these little knobs from around both of the boots and both sides of the boots. They don't have to be completely slick, but you know, you want to get them down smaller for sure. Now we're going to put the frame back together. It does snap, but it will fall apart. So I'm going to add some Gorilla Glue in between the pieces of this plastic frame and then hold it together until it is drying. Protect your fingers here. We're going to do both boots the same way. We've got to go in the front now and work on this seam. So we'll go all the way down the front just following that little crack, that little gap between there, filling it in with the glue and then holding it until it is dry. You see it gets right in between those two layers. And here they are once they've cooled. I'm going to take some of this felt roll from Dollar Tree and cut it into strips. It's about a two inch strip I guess you could say and it's mm, probably however long this roll is and I'm going to cut it into two strips. One for each boot. Now if you've seen my Halloween DIYs you know where I'm going with this. This is going to be like a structure or a base to add other things on though. So I'm just going to add some hot glue and then attach it to itself and then begin to wrap it all around here. This doesn't have to be pretty. You just want to ensure that you have all of the cracks covered up and that everything is a solid piece again. So we took all the tinsel off. You could see the frame. Now we're covering the frame in this felt. I am going to just kind of make sure everything is where it should be. There might be some little gaps in there. It's kind of hard sometimes to get around curves and things like that, but you know, you can make it work and add your hot glue in there where you need it to hold it together. It doesn't have to be beautiful, but it needs to be as smooth as possible for the next step that we do. I'm going to do the same thing with the other little boot. Cross the frame on the underneath side and then wrap it. This is going to help hold it in place while it is all covered. I knew when I saw these Santa boots, this had to be done. I just knew it. I loved doing the witch's boots, so I thought, you know, we're going to do this again. We're going to do this for Santa. You could also use this technique um, to make little boots for gnomes if you would like. All right, now we're going to take some of that air dry clay. It is a very stretchy and can be sticky, so just be careful. It does stick, you know, to um, sticks to everything, really. If you try to roll it out on the table, it'll come apart. So I just try to mash it out in my hand um, and go around the whole boot. Just make like a sheet of it and then it is stretchy so it's not going to break. 
um, not break easily anyway. And you need to be sure that you get all those little lumps out once you've got it completely covered and as smooth as you can get it. You can add a little water to your fingertips and then you can just kind of pat and lightly rub over that surface to make it nice and smooth. I did notice that it ended up being a little bit smoother once it dried than it actually did when it was still wet. So I don't know if that ex if it expands a little bit. I'm not sure what the process is for that. And then I'm just going to take some more little pieces and just add that here and there where I need thicker sections, where I've pulled it too far, or where it needs a little more coverage. It's very forgiving when it comes to that. All right. If y'all are concerned about my two black fingernails down there, I am trying out some fingernail um, like adhesive or nail polish strips so I'm just trying it out with my crafting so um, that's what that is on my two fingers all right so once it is completely dry because my understanding is if you paint it when it's wet it can crack so let it dry completely and I just left it overnight then I'm gonna add the jet black paint to Santa's boots now these are not the boots do not appear to be your classic Santa boots that have that fat round toe that sticks up. Um, if you want to do that on yours, you certainly can. Santa is actually going to have something a little bit closer to some Ugg boots on. Yeah. It's going to be a no heel, a very safe boot for Santa. We don't want him slipping around on anybody's roof and falling. So he's going to have nice, grippy, no heel boots. I'm just going to take that paint and just go over it all over and it just it paints like a dream this foam does so i'm going to go all over and then one coat was really probably all i needed but after it dried in between i went ahead and gave it two coats on each boot you can find my videos on mondays and thursdays at five central standard time it's free when the boots are dried now we have to move on and find a sole for the boot we need a bottom so you can use like a thick cardstock, or you can use some type of a flexible foam, or you can use foam board and just paint the edges. I'm gonna do it both ways to show you what you can do. So if you're using like a cardstock or a cardboard, something like that, um, just trace it out with a pencil. Now, because you formed this out of clay, the boots are not gonna be exactly the same size unless you are just that good. And I am just not that good. So I am going to uh, can be honest about that, and you're just going to do each one. It's my understanding that no two feet are exactly alike anyway, even when they belong to the same person. So we're going to treat each boot separately, cut it out, and then this will be what the sole of your boot can be. We will call this a Santa moccasin if you use the flat version of this, which is the paper instead of the foam piece and you're just going to keep trimming it down you want it to be nice and rounded and neat if you're going to use it for the bottom and then you would just glue it on there we wrapped across the bottom so we do have something to glue onto. or you can take those pieces of paper you just used or use the boot again and then go over some foam or some like I said foam board whatever you have just use your imagination I thought this looked like a good sole for a boot and then just cut it out. This actually is a pad um, that came with a heat press that I got and the heat press did not function properly and this was torn so I saved it because you know crafters we save everything and I thought this would be perfect. So now I'm trimming it with the scissors you know just giving it a rounded look we don't want it to have any little jerks and snags in there. I want it to look nice and, you know, like you would want your own shoes to look. We shouldn't expect any less of Santa. And then, once you get your two um, little soles together, and you get them about the same size so that nothing sticks out too far, then you can use, uh, put them on the bottom of each boot to make sure you got the right boot. Just kind of giving it a little dry fit like I do with everything else before I glue it and I decided to try my sander on it to give it a really nice smooth edge and would you believe this works so I used my sanding block and those sanding blocks come from Dollar Tree 
and I'm just going to go all around this with my sanding block. Get it nice and smooth. So can you think of some other type of material you can use for the sole of Santa's boot without making the project more expensive? I really can't since it's this, this was free and it actually would have been garbage. All right, so now I'm gonna sit these on here so I can see exactly which sole fits which boot. There we go. Check it out, make sure it's the right one. I like this. And then just using some hot glue, I'm gonna put this on the bottom and you need to be careful because I did go over here. Um, I got kind of messy. See how I got the glue off that? So I'm just gonna use the back of my pen to kind of wipe that off before it dries. And then I'm going to sit this down like a puzzle piece right on top and then squish it down kind of gently, firmly, but gently um, because, you know, glue goes everywhere and it squishes out and makes a mess. But I'm going to show you how to fix that too. This was a troubleshooting kind of situation, but I did all the hard work so that you would not have to. On the bottom of the other one, we'll put that one together. And I don't think I mentioned it, but I did show it. Be sure when you're wrapping the boot that you wrap around the bottom section too, because that's gonna give you a bigger surface to glue the sole down to the little boot. Oh, I think they're precious. I hope y'all like these. This was just so fun to do. Don't you just love miniature things? It's so cute. So then I was gonna use some yarn, uh, but it was a big mess. So I spare you that because I don't re recommend it. I'm going to use some black pipe cleaners or Chanel stems, whichever way you want to call it. I'm going to wrap it around to see how much I need, use my cutters here to cut it off, and then starting my seam in the back, I'm going to add some glue. Protect your fingers if you're using hot glue, but I'm just going to place it down. You got to kind of hold it because there's a wire in this, you know, and it'll pop up. As you can see, my spider web's there where I let go. I try to hold it down. Hold it in place for a moment so that that glue has time to cool a little bit and grip onto the surface. And now if you get some little spider webs, you can kind of rub those off. And there's another way that you can do it um, that I'll show you in just a minute to get that off. And there you go. Add a little bit of heat. But move that heat, put it on the lowest section and move it back and forth quickly. Don't hold it in one spot because it can melt your clay. It can, who knows what else it could do. But I didn't want to take any chances but it does clean up the um, all that extra glue really nice for this. So here's our little boots. You can get your paint and go back over if you've scratched any spots or you know if you um, had some glue that stuck and made a mess. Now I want to give this the furry look that traditional Santa boots has. So I'm just going to go up about two and a half inches which is about a half inch bigger than the boot from the um, that top cuff part. I'm just going to use my silver paint pen because it's here and it marks easy on here. Put a couple of dots so I get a straight line with my ruler and then I'm going to cut that out. Now I cut out the long piece of that so that um, I don't know what is that about six or seven inches. You're going to cut that strip into half, into half, into halves. And then always start the seam in the back. That's what I recommend so that you don't see a mess in the front. And you're going to want to add to your frame and just maybe right in that little space that is right between that section, the frame section and the actual black part of the boot. My little leather boots are waterproof. They may be neoprene. We don't know. We don't know where Santa shops. But whatever, we're going to do the best we can for Santa. We want him to stay warm, so we're going to take this fur and add it on here. We're just going across the little ribs of this. And again, this is just one of those things where um, hot glue or cool temp glue is just, for me, better. Um, it grips quickly and you don't have to hold everything and wait. And like I've said before, timing is important when you're a crafter. And I know that y'all understand that. If you're a crafter, you know, you know, you're busy, you have family, you know, maybe you have kids, grandkids that you're raising, maybe you are um, caring for your adult parents, whatever the situation may be, maybe even a sick spouse. 
and you uh, you really have to be careful about your time. You know, maybe you work full time. If you do, you really got to try to get those crafting moments in when you can, right? So you can see what I've done here. Now I'm just cupping the seamed part down under and then pressing it down, kind of rolling it inward and down so that it sticks to not only the frame but itself. That's just going to keep it more secure. And that's how that one looks so far. And then we'll move on to the next boot and we will treat it exactly the same way. A little glue here. Overlap your seam. Wrap it around by adding some glue here and there. Not necessary to put it on the top because you will, you will be folding that under, so no, no worries about that. And continue around. If you are just stopping by today and you don't already know this channel, this is a budget-friendly crafting channel where I try to bring you thrifted and Dollar Tree and inexpensive yet very nice looking DIYs for you to bring into your home and hopefully bring you some joy in the process. So I would love to have you stick around and subscribe if you would like to be part of that. Alright, so here are the boots. Are they not precious? Santa boots need buckles, right? I almost forgot. So I'm using a big popsicle stick. Um, and they're very thin. You can cut them with scissors. I'm just going to cut two little sort of square, more of a rectangle I guess, to fit on the boot. And I'm just going to use my little nail filer here to file down the sides. Be careful they can crack. Then I'm going to use paint pens to draw on my buckle. And I'm going to start off with the black center. It's definitely not perfect. That is quite alright. It's handcrafted, so it's not going to be exactly perfect. Heck, a lot of the stuff you get from manufacturers isn't perfect either. And that's okay. If you like it, that's okay. So now that we have the centers done, I'm going to move on and use a gold marker. I know that you couldn't see that. I do have these markers linked in my Amazon store, and I'm an affiliate. Um, if you would like to check out any of the products that I use, always check the Amazon store. It is linked in the description box. I'm going to go around the edges too to make this look nice. You can actually color the back if you would like. And the paint in these pens is thick enough that I could actually run that gold back over this, the black um, slightly if they weren't the same size. And I just kept comparing them to each other to make sure that they were you know, pretty much the same size. So now I'm just getting an idea of the buckle here. Look at my fingers. They're nice and gold. I got the Midas touch today. Little hot glue on the back and then place it on. And I did kind of eyeball it first to make sure that I knew where I wanted them before I glued them down. And that is what that looks like. You could actually put a strap on there if you wanted to, you know. Um, sometimes you see that belted strap that goes around a boot. You could do that if you wanted, but I thought this was this would be fine. We get the idea. Now this is how we're gonna decorate these little boots. You can use them as a pair or you can use them individually. Let me show you really quickly what I put in here so that you can duplicate it. I have some thrifted picks and a little thrifted vintage candy cane. And I'm just going to stagger them back and forth. The white snowy piece in the back is a little more to the left. The pom-poms are a little more to the right. Then the icicles to the left and the candy cane to the right. And I'll do the same thing in both of them. So you can make two gifts with this, or you could use them as a set and put them on your table. The next project is going to be two candle rings. I'm going to start off with some of this that I got at the thrift store, but this is actually, I think, from Dollar Tree? No, Walmart. They're frosted picks. You can get snowy if that's what you want. But most of the time, um, you see stuff covered in glitter or like a fine snow, I think. Um, you know, as far as vintage or retro goes. So I was trying to kind of stick to that idea. This is some um, vintage ribbon that I have. It's two-sided. Can y'all believe it? And then a pack, a two-pack of these little rings from Dollar Tree. So they're wreath rings, but we're going to use them for our candles. We're going to use a little bit of floral wire to hold them in place. 
and then we'll start wrapping this around. So I'm going to take these sections that are cut about the same size and I'm going to attach the first one down to the middle rung of that wreath. Just going to continue to wrap that around there and protect your fingers. Use some pliers if you need to. And then I am going to pull that tightly. And then we're going to do like a step down. So I'm going down a couple of inches. Going to overlap it. Going to go down a few more inches. Overlap that. And then continue to add until you are completely full all the way around that wreath. You could use holly, which I wish I had holly because I think that would have been like the ideal thing to use. You can use holly if you want to try to stick to the vintage idea. That's what I saw a lot of in the decor. But the boxwood will work. But it's lightly frosted, so nothing too flocked or anything like that. It's just a little bit of like an iridescent snowy glitter on there. All right, when you get back to the end of wrapping, you're going to just wrap it around that frame, wrap it to itself. Just like that. And then start kind of giving it a dry run with the berries and see if you like the placement, how many you like. Now for these, these berries came, they're kind of wrapped in twos. So I just decided to leave that alone and go with that. We're leaving it in twos and going around. I want to make sure I have enough to cover, but I don't want to, I don't want the berries to be overbearing. I want the greenery to be the bulk of what you notice when you look at this. Now that I know where I want them, I'm going to add my hot glue and then secure them down. So I'll just poke them back and forth until I get them how I like them. Using hot glue is really going to make a difference here. Just continue around until they're all glued down into place. You could use table scatter, like some red table scatter if you wanted to. You can use any other type of red berry that you like. And I know Dollar Tree has a variety of those, even on picks. So what about if you're working on your second one and you run out of your original greenery? Well, that's kind of what happened. So I'm going to show you what you can do. Go ahead and grab up some more scraps of greenery that you have and start putting those in there. What I try to do is add them in where they're evenly spaced so it looks intentional and it doesn't look like I ran out and just started poking stuff in there. And you can kind of weave the layers together and have some sticking out a little more and have some a little bit closer. Not only do you want to do the outside, but you want to add some to the inside. Not too much because keep in mind, this is not a wreath. It's going to be a candle ring, so you still need to have the opening in the middle where you can sit your candle. I do recommend a flameless candle for this um, so that nothing you know, possibly catches on fire, gets knocked over. You just don't ever know when you have pets in the house or children or even adults make mistakes, you know. You don't want to take a chance on anybody getting hurt. So you can just kind of watch what I'm doing here. Next, I'm going to start with this bow. And I've got this beautiful ribbon. I'm going to go with about six inches. And then just loop it back on itself until you have two loops on the left two loops on the right and I know that you can't really see what I'm doing here and I apologize but I do have bow videos so you have seen me do this bow before once I get it all loopy I'm going to take two tiny snips in the center and then I'm going to take a piece of this white cotton cord and go right around the middle you can use whatever you have. You can use your jute if you want to, but the white matches the ribbon, so I thought it would blend in without, you know, being noticed that much. So then I'm going to fluff those loops out, and putting notches in the bow helps this ribbon, which does not have wire in it, to stand out and to have a little body. And that's what you want. So that's what I'm doing here, and I'm pulling those 
I'm pulling the tails kind of downward and pulling the loops out and it does stand up really nice. Then you can just cut your little little tiny tiny little tails into little slants or dovetails whichever way uh, you prefer and then using some hot glue I am going to hold this down until it is dry because it will try to pop up if you don't. So if you put a candle in the center, which is what this is intended for, this is how it's gonna look. We'll go back to the other one, which was like the first one we did. I'm going to add that bow on there and then put a candle in the center. This is how those two are gonna look. Be sure that you use a hurricane or something like that in a fake candle. Now we're gonna go on to some Santa ornaments. These are so cute, they're very easy. So you're gonna get some type of a wood ornament. You can get yours at Dollar Tree if you would like. And I've got some vintage Santa paper here and he's in two different poses on the paper. I'm using some of this antique parchment and my chippy brush and either my podge or a glue stick. I'm gonna start by just kind of block cutting this out. I'm trying to be sure to not damage the rest of the paper and I'm just cutting out the two different poses. I'm going to take this paint and kind of dry brush it. I start off sort of light and then build it up. You can paint this solid, you could leave it brown, whatever floats your boat. I do know though that I chose this color because it's very similar to the background of that paper so that if I don't cut it close enough in some spots you'll still be able to it'll be blended in other words you know you won't be able to necessarily see it it'll kind of blend in so now we have these individual pieces it's easier to work with if you will notice here I'm holding my scissors kind of still and I am moving the paper around this is very helpful if you have arthritis if you have um, any type of dexterity problems I feel like this one thing has helped me so much with my hands and my thumbs hurting. All right, this is what it looks like with one side done. It is Subscriber Appreciation Month and I appreciate you so very much and I wanna say thank you by giving back. So how do I do that? Here are the rules and I want you to be sure to check them out. All right, now, this is how our little sandals are gonna go on here after the paint's dry. I'm going to use my glue stick and just put this all over here. As I have said before, the purple, that color shows me where I've got the paint so I know that I'm putting it, not the paint, the glue, so I know where I'm putting it and make sure that every little piece of this sticks down because what happens if you have floppy pieces? It can catch on something and tear and it would destroy my ornament and crush my soul. So. Doing it this way ensures that I don't have a nervous breakdown. Okay, I'm gonna put this on here and just kind of move it around in place using my fingers. I kind of hold it in the center to secure it and then move my fingers outward just to make sure that it's stuck down everywhere. Can also use a little squeegee or a credit card. This is my Mod Podge squeegee. And I'm just going to make sure after I've tapped it down with my fingers that I am making sure I'm dragging out any bubbles, any wrinkles. Isn't he precious? I love those. Santa's so cute. I love the Santas that have those vintage little faces. They look so cute, so baby-like. All right, so we're gonna use some of that tinsel we took off the boots. I'm gonna cut it into strips long enough to wrap around the top of my ornament and twist it over on itself in the back so that I can glue it down. This is wired, of course, and it makes it easier for you to do this. You can use ribbon if you don't have tinsel, or you can use some string, some red and white baker's twine would be cute too. And then using those little holly berry pieces, I'm gonna add that back on. Those came off the boots too. Gonna do the same thing with the other ornament. Secure it down after you've twisted it together. Let it dry, flip it over, add the little holly. 
And here's our two little Santa ornaments. If you have enjoyed watching these creations come to life, I would love a thumbs up because it tells me that I'm on the right track and I can give you more of what you need. Here's the overview of the projects that we did today. The cute little Santa boots with the picks on the inside. You could also put candy canes in there if you wanted to use this as something a little more functional. You could put some spoons in there if you want to put it by your coffee bar. Or some straws, that would be cute. Our little ornaments that you can put on the tree. I do suggest though that you buy the cheaper wood ornaments because they're lightweight and they won't bend your branches down in case that's important to you. Here are our candle rings with the beautiful vintage ribbon. And I'm pretty sure that the little wreaths on the ribbon are holly. That's what it's looking like to me. Now with my candles lit, just going to give you a quick peek of this before I blow them back out. And I think that these pieces, all of these work well together. I think they would be fine to decorate all of these in the same um, area of your home. Very cute. Feels nostalgic to me. How about Santa's boots? All right, the magic word is going to be holly. So comment holly down below for a chance to win. I think we're gonna do a, yeah, I think we'll do a hand sander this time. So if you're interested in electric hand sander with some other goodies in the box, be sure that you comment holly in the comment section. Everybody will be tossing there together and in seven days we will pull one to see who's gonna be the winner. I believe in you. I appreciate you. I love sharing with you. And I appreciate all the tips and ideas that you give me because I'm learning from you just as much as you learn from me. Believe it or not, I really am. Thank you so much for stopping by. Go out and find some joy in your day. See you again soon.